In this video, we're going to discuss how to utilize Inventor to create a solid model of figure 5-62 pivot arm. This is a very popular selection from the selection sheet for the second assignment in uh, solid modeling and multi-view drawing using Inventor. The object, figure 5-62, can be drawn from a sketch in Inventor starting with the two large circles, uh, spacing them out at seven and an eighth apart, and then working through some of the other sketch geometry and utilizing the tangent constraints. So let's go ahead and get started. In Inventor, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new part file. This is a new standard part file. I'm gonna grab my 2D sketch tool, and I'm gonna select one of the XY planes, one of the origin planes, and then I'm gonna grab a circle tool. Go ahead and center this on my sketch, and I'm going to pull out now. I believe that the geometry given in that particular part uh, gives me diameter of three and three eighths. So right now this is in radius, so I'm going to right click and come down and change that to diameter. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, three space three forward slash eight. Very easy to put in fractional information in Inventor. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, space out the distance from one of the center circles to center circle of seven and one eighth. And I'll go ahead and sketch out the remaining geometry for the second circle. And I'll mouse back over to that. The outside circle is two and five eighths. So we'll continue back over here and do two space five eighths. And now I'm ready to start setting up what's gonna be the tangent uh, constraint and outside edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and then select, oops, sorry. Let me go ahead and select my line tool and find the top edge of that particular uh, piece of geometry and then work my way up and around to the top. Now, if the tangent constraint symbol does not pop up, if it does pop up, I can then actually just select that. If that tangent constraint symbol does not pop up, what I can do and have done in the past is just run the line long, hitting escape. Then I'm gonna use this tangent constraint. From the constraint pull bar, toolbar, I will select the tangent constraint I will select the line and then the circle. And what happens then is that line locks onto the circle. What only needs to happen at this time is utilizing the trim tool to select the little piece of line that is extending past the tangent point. So now at this point I could then go ahead and delete the 7 and 8 inch line because that was the line that was spacing this out. I can finish the sketch, zoom out, and I can start my extrusion process. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to select my first large circle for extrusion. And it's important that I'm going to select the symmetrical extrusion, so I extrude in both directions. Because when looking at this part, you can see that this part is not all extruded from one surface, and it can be drawn from center and extruded in different areas. So the first extrusion I'm going to utilize is going to be two inches. So I'm going to come back and select this as a two inch surface and hit OK. What happens is all the remaining sketch geometry is turned off, but it's still there. If I then come over to my browser and underneath of the extrusion just created, I can find by hitting the little arrow that sketch. I can select the sketch, right click on that sketch, and turn the visibility back on. I should then be able to come and mouse over the remaining pieces of geometry to then be able to extrude the other areas. Again, I'm going to want to extrude this in both directions, and the center portion of this object is three quarters or 0.75 and then I'm going to find the last area to be extruded and again go in both directions and check on this one see what this is this is uh, one and a quarter so I'll come back into inventor and put in inch and a quarter so this is my roughed out shape I can now go ahead and utilize the hole tool by selecting the hole tool and I'm just going to keep the it's the drilled hole at the top selected. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to select uh, the placement option for concentric because I know that this circle is completely centered on this outside circle. So I'm going to select this is the plane that I'm going to use my circle on. And I can see that this is the circle. Now the concentric reference is going to be the outside edge. And I can now see that it got placed to the center. The inside hole is a diameter of two. So I'll come back to inventor. A strange little glitch there. Come back to Inventor and then give this a diameter of two. 
Now I have one hole complete. I'll come and I'll do the second hole. And again, I'll do a concentric circle, selecting, let's see what the inside, the inside circle is two and five eighths, so that'll work. So I'm gonna select a drilled hole. I'm gonna select the plane. And then I'm gonna find the concentric reference here. And then this is going to be, see, diameter, I forgot already. I'm sorry, one and three eighths is the inside diameter. One and three eighths is the inside diameter. So one, and we'll do a fraction this time, three eighths. Now you can see that this part is now complete. I can go ahead and save this as the figure 5-62 and be able to go ahead and start the process to lay out this part.